Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will be covering what the stimulus to fatigue ratio is and how it can help us select the most effective exercises for hypertrophy training. First, let's explore what the stimulus to fatigue ratio is. All resistance training exercises are generally able to induce some form of hypertrophy. All exercises also generate systemic fatigue. The stimulus to fatigue ratio is a general concept which compares the hypertrophic stimulus of an exercise to its overall systemic fatigue. We generally want to implement exercises which involve the highest hypertrophic stimulus and lower systemic fatigue. Let's now explore what exactly we mean by stimulus and fatigue. The stimulus portion of this ratio refers to how well an exercise provides a hypertrophic stimulus. An exercise that is more stimulative for muscle growth means that less total volume will need to be performed to get the same hypertrophy outcome as an exercise which is less stimulative. There are a few key factors which make an exercise more or less stimulative. The first is range of motion. Generally speaking, an exercise which takes a muscle through a greater range of motion is more stimulative than an exercise which takes the muscle through a partial range of motion. For example, a stiff leg deadlift trains the hamstrings through a larger range of motion than a conventional deadlift. The second factor is muscle tension. This refers to how much tension is placed on the muscle throughout the exercise. Generally speaking, an exercise which allows significant tension to be placed on the muscle throughout the entire range of motion is more stimulative than an exercise which has varying levels of tension. For example, a pec deck allows tension on the pecs throughout the entire range of motion, while a dumbbell fly involves more tension at the bottom of the lift and less tension at the top of the lift. And the last factor that can make an exercise more or less stimulative is the involvement of other muscle groups. Involving other muscle groups isn't an issue, although we want the majority of tension to be placed on the target muscles, not other accessory muscles. For example, a high bar back squat places the majority of tension on the quads, while a low bar back squat distributes more tension on the spinal erectors and glutes. Next, let's discuss the fatigue side of this ratio. This refers to how much systemic fatigue the exercise causes. Since there is a limit to how much volume a trainee can perform in a week, exercises with high systemic fatigue demands reduce how much volume we can perform for that muscle group. Let's now cover a few factors which influence systemic fatigue. The first factor which contributes to systemic fatigue is the absolute load lifted for a given exercise. Generally, the heavier the load is, the more systemic fatigue it will induce. So exercises where the trainee can naturally lift heavy loads will probably be more fatiguing than a similar exercise which allows less load to be lifted. For example, a back squat will require more load to be lifted than a hack squat machine, even though both exercises train the quads. The second factor that will influence fatigue is stability demands. Exercises that require accessory muscles to stabilize other joints will induce more fatigue than exercises which don't. Although these muscles aren't directly working to move the weight, they are still required to contract isometrically to limit joint movement. For example, a standing military press requires the legs and trunk to be stabilized, whereas a seated military press eliminates these stability demands. And the last factor which influences fatigue is cardiovascular demands. Exercises with higher cardiovascular demands will generally induce more physical and mental fatigue than exercises with lower cardiovascular demands. For example, a set of back squats involves much higher cardiovascular demands than a leg press. So when selecting exercises for a hypertrophy training program, we want to weigh up the stimulus and fatigue demands of the exercise and select those which provide the best balance. Here are some examples of different exercises that have different stimulus to fatigue ratios. The first example we will cover is performing a conventional deadlift versus a stiff leg deadlift for the hamstrings and glutes. The conventional deadlift doesn't take these muscles through a full range of motion, there is less tension on the hamstrings throughout the movement, and there are many other muscles and joints involved in the lift. The stiff leg deadlift on the other hand, uses a larger range of motion, places tension on the hamstrings throughout the entire movement, and there is less tension placed on the spinal erectors and lats. The conventional deadlift involves heavier loads to be lifted, has higher stability demands, and higher cardiovascular demands since the load being moved is much heavier. The stiff leg deadlift involves lighter loads, has lower stability demands, and lower cardiovascular demands. So, for these two exercises, the stiff leg deadlift will provide a greater stimulus for the hamstrings and glutes than a conventional deadlift, and will also be less fatiguing. Therefore, the stiff leg deadlift may be a better choice out of these two exercises for hypertrophy gains. 
The second example we will discuss is power shrugs versus strict shrugs for the traps. Power shrugs and strict shrugs probably take the traps through a similar range of motion if they are performed with full range. There is probably more tension placed on the traps throughout the entire range using strict shrugs, while there is probably less tension at the top of the range for power shrugs as there is a ballistic jerk in the movement. And there is much more tension placed on other muscle groups during the power shrug than the strict shrug. Power shrugs involve much heavier loads to be lifted than a strict shrug. Because of this, the power shrug requires higher stability and cardiovascular demands than the strict shrug. So the power shrug is probably equally or less stimulative than the strict shrug, but induces much higher levels of systemic fatigue. Therefore, the strict shrug is probably a better choice for upper trap hypertrophy. And the last two exercises we will compare are the barbell and dumbbell bench press for the pecs. Both exercises involve a very similar range of motion, muscle tension, and involvement of other muscle groups. The dumbbell press may have a slightly greater range of motion depending on how it is performed, although it is not significant. Therefore, they are probably roughly equally as stimulative for the chest. In terms of fatigue, the load lifted will be greater for the barbell press, although the stability demands are slightly greater for the dumbbell press, as they are free to move in more dimensions. Both exercises have low cardiovascular demands, making both exercises overall quite low in terms of fatigue. So the barbell and dumbbell bench press don't have any significant advantages over one another, so they are probably roughly as effective as each other for chest muscle growth. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.